Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're live once again here on Instagram, and inshallah, we'll just be waiting with Sheikh, uh, for Sheikh Adnan to come on, uh, and then we will commence. Uh, today's topic will basically be uh, okay, so I'm just waiting. Instagram is telling me to wait for a little bit until a few people have joined. So, inshallah, we will be talking about a topic that is very, very interesting. Sheikh Adnan has just joined us. I'm just waiting for him to request. Okay, Bismillah. He's, um, he's requested. Okay, waiting for Sheikh Adnan to join. Right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh Adnan, once again? Good to have you on the live. I hope you're all well, and I hope uh, those who are listening or following are all well too. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So today's topic basically is going to be how we sometimes commit certain sins and we feel like we are unworthy of doing any good deeds because we're committing those sins. So a lot of this, a lot of times this happens to the youth, you know, they're engaged in some sort of haram deed. So they're uh, either drinking alcohol or smoking or going to the clubs. And then they feel, how can I go to the masjid and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm unworthy of his uh, mercy or his forgiveness. What, what advice would you have for such youth or such people? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, the most beneficent, and there are many verses in the Quran wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages those who commit sin, even when it comes to major sin, he encourages them to make tawbah. That's why some of the scholars mention that the, it's one opinion. The verse that has the most hope in the Quran is wherein Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبُودِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Tell those, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Tell those, you know, who've wronged themselves, who've oppressed themselves, who've carried out sin. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Not only that, inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'ah. Allah says, you've committed a sin, you think it's too big. Allah says, he forgives all sins. You know, we, when we follow the Quran and we find that there are certain uh, punishments that Allah mentions for certain people, we find that those people, immediately after Allah mentions the punishment, he always calls them to tawbah. And he tells them, if you repent, I will forgive you. For example, speaking about the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, Allah says they are in the lowest part of the fire. Thereafter, he says, but if they had to make tawbah and do good deeds, Allah will forgive them. Absolutely. You know, uh, something I find very, very, very interesting is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And there are other people who will come literally on the day of Qiyamah. They'll have uh, sins and they'll have good deeds. So although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about a specific group of people, this applies to all of us, that uh, they have sins and good deeds. Uh, Perhaps or soon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. Inna Allah ghafoorur rahim. As far as I'm sure the ayah ends as, Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. So he's telling us that even if you have good, even if you have bad deeds that you're doing, you're smoking, you're drinking, you're going to the clubs, when you feel within you that let me go to the masjid, don't let your drinking, your smoking, anything else stop you from going to the masjid. Obviously, you should make sure that you're not intoxicated when you do go to the masjid, but make sure that you do go. Because ultimately, shaitan wants you to lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why in that ayah that you mentioned, he, he says that, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we look at who he's addressing, those who uh, have been extreme with themselves, There's, they've oppressed themselves by committing various sins. So the doors of rahmah and forgiveness are always open to everyone. And even if you are coming back to the extent that you are coming back from the nightclub, you see a beggar and you give a sadaqah, that sadaqah is not necessarily rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of where you're coming from. 
You give it with a sincere heart. Ya Allah, I'm weak. I seek istighfar for what I've done. But here's a sadaqah for your sake and for your pleasure. At least you're acknowledging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that instance. Yes, adding to what you've mentioned, when it comes to, we all know there's a lot of stories in the Quran about Tawbah, a lot of stories in the Ahadith mentioned about how, how Allah, for, you know, he forgave certain people. One of the verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Sulaiman alayhi salam, and he says how, you know, he made a mistake where he was occupied with the horses and after that he had missed his salah. Yeah. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Sulaiman alayhi salam sought forgiveness and at the same time he made a dua for Allah to grant him kingdom that he hadn't given anybody else. So look at that. He's made a mistake. He's asking for forgiveness. But he knows Allah can give way more than that. So he asks him for more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he forgives him, you know, tajawaza'an. And he also gave him kingdom that nobody else will ever have. You know, so many times, yes, it's because of shaitan. When we commit a sin, we think that, you know, there's no hope for me. Or what am I doing? How can Allah forgive me? That's all from shaitan. Force yourself to do it. Force yourself immediately. If you've committed a sin, immediately try to carry out a good deed. Yes. You know, uh, I, I'm faced with this question a lot because sometimes you look at your own mistakes and your own shortcomings and you start wondering, you know, how do I go out there to the people and uh, advise them to be good and tell them to be good? And truly speaking, that is waswasa from shaitan because kullu bani adam khatta. All of the uh, sons of Adam are khatta'un. They, they will make mistakes. They will make, they will commit sins. But ultimately, as long as you constantly turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should never feel unworthy of the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that his uh, doors of forgiveness are always open. Um, I think a lot of uh, people assume that when they see a person speaking to them in front of them, that this is an angel. Understand that all of us are human beings. We make mistakes, but it doesn't mean that we that should stop us from advising others to do good, trying to be good in and of ourselves. Um, so I think that's also a dilemma that some people face, that how can I advise another human being, yet I'm also sinning, you know, I'm doing something wrong. Yes, I think these are two different deeds. One is when it comes to yourself, doing the actual good deed or staying away from the evil deed. And we must remember that da'wah is also a good deed. So it doesn't mean if you're not doing this good deed, you also leave that good deed, you leave the da'wah. But at the same time, we must also try and practice, uh, you know, what we preach and follow the footsteps and the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, if you really true and sincere in your heart, and you try your best, not only in the heart, but you try your best to change. You know, tawbah is of different uh, levels. Sometimes, yes, a person can leave a sin completely. That's what's needed. But sometimes if you're trying to reduce that sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, all merciful. He's ghafoor rahim He can forgive you for that and he can help you to leave that sin. Yes, and ultimately he knows how you are struggling, your fight against that sin. So a person who was smoking 20 cigarettes a day now comes down to five. Uh, Allah knows that this person is doing his best. He's craving, he wants to smoke. He wants to engage in this drinking habit that he has. He really wants a bottle, but from you know being drunk all the time, he's now only drunk half of the time. And he's working towards getting rid of that sin. Ultimately, Allah knows you better than you know yourself. So he knows that you're on the right path. And if you stick to that and keep getting, you know, reducing the amount until you've given it up totally, then you are on the path to, towards goodness. You know, so there's uh, some ahadith. In fact, we'll mention one. There's many ahadith. An example, there was a man who had passed away and he told his children, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari. He told his children, that, you know, after I pass away, burn my body and throw half of it on land and throw half of it in the sea. Why? Because I'm worried. I haven't, you know, I haven't done anything good for myself. No good deeds. I'm scared to meet Allah. 
after that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when this man met Allah, and Allah asked him, you know, what made you do this? He said, oh Allah, I only did it out of your fear. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he forgave him. Also in some ahadith, it's mentioned that he was asked, do you know of any good deed that you did? And he said, no. Then he mentioned one. He said, when it came to giving out money, giving out loans, those who were poor and couldn't pay back, I used to forgive them. Those who were rich and they had some sort of problems, they wanted more time, I would give them more time. One good deed and Allah gave him Jannah. Wow, 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 wow. I think that's uh, of utmost importance to mention, you know. And uh, one hadith that I find amazing, and I think it's important for us to raise it here today because uh, a lot of people go out there and after they've committed the sin, Allah's covered them. You know, they did it in the darkness of the night. Nobody knew what they were doing. They come out and they say on Facebook that, you know, I did X, Y, and Z last night. This is what I was engaged in. This is the haram that I did. And that is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person who doesn't do this, he commits sin. He comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. The hadith says that فَيُلْقِي عَلَيْهِ كَنَفَةً Allah will put his cover onto him and he'll cover his sins and he'll ask him and say, uh, you know, what, what, uh, have you committed these sins? Have you committed those sins? And the person will admit to his wrongdoings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ سَتَرْتُ هَلَكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَهَانَ أَغْفِرُ هَلَكَ الْيَوْمِ That I, for, I covered them for you in the dunya. You didn't expose yourself. So here I am forgiving you today. Imagine on that day when everybody's deeds are out in the open, people can see, and this person's deeds are being covered. Uh, his bad deeds are being covered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solely because he had the shame to hide away when he committed a sin and he didn't expose himself afterwards. So this leaves a person with some hope. And I think it's very important in today's age when people just come out there on different social media platforms, they brag to their friends, to the public, hey, look at who I've got on, on my arm, you know. Uh, come on, guys. You, you've got to understand that Allah gets angry. Allah gets displeased. And when you do that, it displeases him even more. So take the, the, the literally, the for lack of a better word, the feelings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into consideration. Uh, if you had done that to, to your wife, if you were, for example, married and you cheated on her, you wouldn't go out there and say, hey, you know, I did X, Y, and Z, because you take her emotions into consideration. So the same way, understand that, take the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into consideration. Yeah. Yes, and the hadith you mentioned reminds me of another hadith, hadith Qudsi, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about, he's speaking to the angels. And they mention a slave, one of his servants, who carries on committing a sin and then making a istighfar. So when they mention this to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَذْنَبَ abdi ذَنْبًا my servant has committed a sin and he knows that he, had, he has a Lord who rewards when it comes to good deeds and who punishes when it comes to sin. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that bear witness, he makes the angels bear witness that he has forgiven him. After that, this man commits the sin again and he makes tawbah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him and he makes the sin again, he commits the sin. And he makes tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that let him do whatever he wants because I have forgiven him. What does this mean? This means that there are certain people who commit sins. After that, they make tawbah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, as long as your condition is like that, when you make a sin, you immediately make tawbah. You try to rectify and you admit your mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sin. Absolutely. You know, uh, that, that hadith says, فَعَلِمَ So he knows that he has a Rabb that forgives sins and takes to task for sins. So acknowledging that Allah is most forgiving, most merciful, and he is also severe in his punishment, when you acknowledge that, that will drive you to tawbah. It will drive you to seeking that rahmah and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's, it's of utmost importance for us to know that Allah is ghafoor, Allah is rahim. And Allah is also Shadidul Iqab, and that maintains the balance for a human being. So it actually says in that hadith that Fa'alima, so he knows, he acknowledges, and he remembers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these qualities. Yes, as you mentioned, and adding to that, one, yes, he makes his tawbah, 
And then he must try to occupy himself doing good deeds. Remember, your time during the day is one. You're not going to have 25 hours, 26 hours. No, it's 24 hours. So if you're committing a certain sin, which takes up one hour of your day, two hours of your day, whatever it may be, try and occupy yourself during that time doing something good. Remember, yes, you obviously seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you also have to do something about it now. Try and occupy yourself. Try and not be in the place or in the company of people who you are committing the sin with. Yes, yes, yes. That's very, very important because it's practical. I mean, a lot of people say that, uh, you know, seek the forgiveness of Allah, seek the forgiveness of Allah, but then they don't tell you how to rectify your life and how to make positive changes that will then help you get rid of the sin in totality. So you literally try and strangle the sin with good deeds, you know, get, get rid of it. Like you were saying, you've got 24 hours in a day, try and make sure that your time is occupied with goodness and good deeds. And when we're saying good deeds, sometimes people think that we're trying to tell them that the whole time you've got to be in salah, the whole time you've got to be giving, you know, your, your uh, uh, fasting, etc. You don't have to be doing this all the time. Any Anything that you're doing with the right intention, so long as it's not haram, can become a good deed. So if you're helping your family members, if you're doing your chores around the house, if you're going out to business, uh, to your business place, that all can become a source of uh, income of good deeds uh, for you. And you know, well, uh, the topic we're talking about, a lot of people, they complain about this usually, mostly, it's to do when they've got a sin they're committing in private. Mm. They don't really complain about this when they're doing something in public. No, because they feel that guilt. They know that there's something wrong. They carry on doing it. So what you've got to do is if you alone most of the time or you isolate it some way, try and go out. Try to do a community, something in the community, an activity. Even if it's going out to... It may be the gym, it may be wherever, as you mentioned, with the correct intention. This also becomes a good deed, bi'ibnillah. Absolutely. And you know, the, 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 the very interesting thing is that uh, if you're committing a sin, perhaps in your room uh, at night, you know, nobody sees you, then in that same room that has now borne witness to your sin, let it become a witness to your ibadah and your worship. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go after the sin immediately, make your tawbah, seek istighfar, ask Allah to forgive you. Uh, that sin will be wiped out and the earth that you committed the sin on will now bear witness to the fact that this man has uh, done some good deeds, you know, in, in on me or uh, in my presence, so to speak. And, you know, we've spoken a lot about tawbah, rectifying where a person is down. And you know, they're feeling bad about it. Let's also look at the other side. What uh, benefits you achieve when doing good deeds? Bi'ibnillah, your matters become easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you. You see tawfiq and you see yourself being able to do things that you would not imagine by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why it's mentioned that either Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu or Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, they mention that when it comes to a person committing a sin, you know, it has that darkness on the face and it has that evil on the face. And when it comes to a person committing good deeds, it also becomes apparent the way you carry yourself around people. You know, people tend to like people or others who are doing good deeds. And that's from the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think this topic is very relevant and a lot of people really have uh, learned. Someone just mentioned that you have to avoid again, meaning committing the sin again. And uh, yes, absolutely, you should have a sincere intention and make genuine efforts not to commit the sin again. And that's why we were saying how you try and strangle the sin, you know, make sure that you, you do so many good deeds uh, that you don't have time left to commit the sin. So that would show your sincerity. I think an important point to mention when it comes to this a lot of people who commit sin and they feel very guilty, they start making what's called a nether. You try to make a pact with Allah. Your intention is so you leave the sin. So you say, oh Allah, I'll stay away from this sin. And if I had to commit it, you know, I'll fast for 10 days or I'll give so much away or I'll do this or I'll do this. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never asked you to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make it hard for you. So don't make something that was not compulsory upon you. Don't make it compulsory upon you. You make a sin, the, it's been laid out clearly what you need to do. You need to obviously leave the sin, acknowledge the sin, make tawbah and istighfar and then do good deeds. It happens, you know, we all human beings. That's why in one of the hadith, when the Sahabi asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we with you, it's like, you know, we are living in, we have spirituality that we cannot compare. But when we go away, you know, we mix with people, we mix with our families, etc. And our feelings are different. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam basically was telling him, you know, it's step by step, slowly, slowly. If you were only like this, religious 24 7 you know no sin or you doing absolutely nothing wrong the angels would have basically come and greeted you and uh, you know shook your hands yeah basically meaning that that's the difference between us and angels you know uh had we been excellent and perfect absolutely no sin then what's the difference between you and an angel the angel might as well greet you uh it's like your brothers and sisters so the, the difference is the sin but at the same time we, we should uh, always turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we've committed that sin. And uh, tell us, is there any sin that Allah won't forgive so long as you're breathing and, and living? As long as you are living, as long as you are breathing, uh, the, the doors of tawbah are still open for you. And no matter what sin you have committed, even if a person commits the greatest of sins, which is shirk, and then he had to turn to Allah when tawbah is still accepted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. You know, the, the, there's a lot of people today doubting and wondering, and perhaps this could be a topic uh, for another day, doubting the, the, the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether he exists, uh, this type of thing. So even such a person, they, they have a chance at the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may have even doubted him and his existence in your life. But so long as you're breathing, remember you're going back to Allah after you pass on in, in this world. So he's given you a chance, turn back to him. And I think we can quickly highlight the hadith of uh, Rasulullah where he says that shaitan comes to one of you and says, who created this, who created that, uh, who created the mountains, the earth, etc. Until he says, uh, so, if Allah created all of these, then who created Allah? So he's placing doubts in your mind. And that hadith says that when, you, when that happens to you, let him seek refuge in Allah and cut that thought right there. Because obviously, the, there is a beginning to everything and Allah is the beginning. So we need to understand that he, with him, began everything. So the shaitan is very misleading, like how we were saying the other day that he comes and tells you step by step and he takes you to a point of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He won't come to you immediately and tell you, you know, just disbelieve in Allah. You know, adding to what you mentioned, we must remember that people are from different places in the world. There's different environments and every place has its challenge. So where you find people in a certain place, it may be to do with a sin like drinking or smoking or drugs. In other places, no, it's much bigger than that. What's important to remember that if your fundamentals, your belief, you haven't had any doubts, don't now go and start reading about everything doubtful. And at the same time, even if you're trying and you have the intention, you know what, I'm going to read about this and I'm going to read these doubts of everybody else. After that, you know, I learn about it. So many times people who've gone uh, through that route end up changing and because they don't have enough knowledge. Sometimes the questions asked to people or posed to people, the question itself is wrong and people start to doubt. I'll give you an example. They say the argument of an atheist. Person asks you, you know what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you believe in him, yes. You believe he can create anything. Yes, he can create anything. Can he create a very big rock? You say yes. They then say, can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is he now they make him such that he is unable to lift that rock. The question itself is wrong. The question mm -hmm. itself, in the first part, you've given Allah the power to create the rock. Then in the second part, you say that, no, this rock, Allah has created it and it's too heavy for him to carry because you said he can do anything. So the question itself is wrong. 
people don't realize this. There's a lot of uh, in-depth analysis and studies and tactics that people, you know, they, they carry out in order to get you from point A to point B. And they don't take you one way. They go from here to here to here. So if you're not in that type of an environment, don't go to everything that's bad and evil and try to read on it. No, keep yourself safe. It's mentioned that one of the scholars, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he mentioned to Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, when they were, you know, when he was writing a lot about shubuhat, etc. He said, don't be like a sponge that sucks everything in. He said, you must be like a mirror and clean. Anytime there's a little bit of dirt, you clean it. Basically, he's trying to tell him, but don't go into everything that's wrong and study it and see and how. No, because after that, your heart, you also start to forget. And sometimes it can affect you. As for those people who are in these types of situations, you find a lot of the times, as we mentioned before, it's because of your environment. And number two is you've got a lot of time. You've got a lot of time on your hands. So you're thinking about what's being thrown at you. Try and go and do something which is of benefit. Yes, that, that's a whole topic on its own. So inshallah, we'll talk about it another day, ta'ala, if you're comfortable with the topic. Uh, the thing is, you know, um, previously the scholars also would try to avoid talking about this in order to, uh, you know, protect people from this t- these type of thoughts. But today, uh, there's so many people asking and questioning. And uh, I think it's very important, the world being a global village, uh, sometimes the youth find it difficult to even come and ask those who know better. And then they go onto the internet and uh, find content that wouldn't be suitable uh, for them, you know, or uh, good for them. Or it can at the, uh, at the same time, but they don't have like an option where they can receive the correct and right uh, information from. So inshallah, We'll try and uh, discuss that on another live, bi'ithnillah. Uh, one last question before we go. Uh, someone asked me something interesting on, uh, on, the, on the messages, basically, and said that, you know, how did Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, receive wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Was it in the form uh, of speech, like how the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or was it a book that was revealed at once? that came down to Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, I thought I'd pose that question to you. I think we'll have to research on that topic. Yeah, it, it's very interesting because I also... We, we not, we're not very sure about. I also was not sure, actually. And uh, I said, you know, this is something very, uh, very interesting. And I think uh, we should research and find out, you know, although it doesn't necessarily impact our day-to-day lives, uh, it's something of importance. I mean, well, why don't we know, you know, we, we, we should yes. uh, help. Now, yes. as, as you said, as you said, we must remember that what comes in the Quran and the Hadith, whatever's mentioned to us, Allah knows that that's what we need. Certain details he may not have mentioned. I'm not saying in this particular case. So, for example, the people of the cave, who were they, what were their names, and where exactly did they come from, and how long was they here, and... Allah didn't mention all this yes. because there was no hukum, there's no ruling or something of benefit built on this. So we must remember that, yes, if there's an answer, we look for it and we say we don't know. But if there's no answer, don't try and go searching everywhere else and get to an answer that's not really going to have a, basically, bear the, you don't bear any fruit from that search. Absolutely. It's been love, ha- lovely having you on the, on the live, alhamdulillah. Uh, it was uh, originally your idea to come on to, uh, you know, start something like this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I think there's been a lot of benefit. Uh, alhamdulillah, people have really enjoyed the, 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 the discussions. And uh, I've got a lot of uh, positive feedback in my messages, etc. So, uh, Jazakumullah khair for joining us once again. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Ameen. Ameen, ameen. Wa iyaakum an an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all those who are following. Remember... We know that there is a virtue for attending the halaqat of ilm, basically the gatherings where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discussed. And in the hadith, it's mentioned that this is the, these gatherings are the places of the angels. Now, when it comes to these live streams, even before the lockdown, a lot of scholars mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his fadl and his virtue is very vast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can you know reward those who attend 
such uh, events or such lectures and gatherings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward them with the reward of having attended these gatherings. What is the reward, one may ask. In the hadith, the angels, they mention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll basically summarize it quickly, how they are these gatherings of knowledge. And they went there. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then asked them what happened and who was there, etc. They then mentioned that, oh Allah, there was a man who came, you know, he passed and he never really want the gathering, but he was just like passing by. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says basically that he's forgiven everybody in the gathering. Thereafter, they ask him, even that man, you know, who just came and he went to, he didn't really come for the gathering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have even, you know, I also have forgiven him. So that is the virtue of attending this type of halaqat and gathering. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our gatherings uh, such. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today. That's what I've got. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, one thing that came to my mind whilst you were talking right now was that, uh, you know, how these gatherings, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everybody who attends such gatherings with the right intention, etc. Now, even a person who's come online, you know, and left, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive that person as well. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and reward us. And uh, at the same time, you know, the phones that are being used for haram uh, in today's world, we're using it for a lot of haram. If we use it at times for uh, good deeds, then perhaps it will come as a uh, intercessor, uh, in, you know, in, uh, someone, something that intercedes on our behalf on the day of Qiyamah. Yes, and as you mentioned, related to the topic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his mercy and his virtue is vast. Fadlullahi wasi'. There's nobody who can tell you he won't forgive and he will forgive here or he won't reward and he will reward. So we hope and we always have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always make dua to get the highest and the best of rewards. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant that to every single one of us. Ameen, ameen. Jazakallah khair once again. And uh, salamu alaikum. Ila al-liqa. Till next time. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam. So guys, I'm just looking how I can save this video, but unfortunately, bi'ithnillah, there's been no, there's been no allowance for me to uh, save this. So inshallah, I'll try and save it next time and we'll see how to do that. Uh, I've been having difficulty saving it. There's a lot of people uh, asking me to make sure that we save it, but unfortunately we can't. Alhamdulillah, we had a lovely session. I see uh, Brother Danish is saying that it was extremely beautiful session. Alhamdulillah. I'd love to save it. Uh, I think it's a sister who's asking. I'd love to save the session, but uh, unfortunately I can't. I just don't know why uh, Instagram doesn't allow me to do so. No, the left corner actually doesn't have it. Even when I'm end ending the video, it doesn't give me the option in the left corner. So uh, I'll share it to my yes top left corner. I know that uh, Mufti was telling me the other day that it is in the top left uh, corner. But when we looked together as well, we couldn't find it, uh, unfortunately. So it's, it's not there. I think the reason may be because there was somebody else on the live as well. So how can I have access to their uh, privacy, so to speak? Like, how can I save a video on which uh, Sheikh Adnan was in this instance? So possibly that's the reason why Instagram is not allowing me to save the video. Um, inshallah, I'll, I'll do my best to save it today. If we can't, then it will be available for 24 hours on my uh, story. Okay, then someone's saying change your phone. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Okay, then, salam alaikum till next time.